really we should uh, try to focus on the technology in the future. So, I don't know, but probably some of you have seen part of the MIT focusing presentation before. I still have to do it because for a people that haven't seen it, it needs to be explained. And putting this right in, I am absolutely sure everybody knows what market is, uh, but I myself like to be reminded of the technology. And uh, the two main markets that we always encounter are the long arm markets, and these are the ones that arrive distinctly between different times than the primary. And they can uh, obscure your actual geological uh, <coughs> signature, the size you come up from your geology. And then they have the short mark markers, and those arrive very soon after the primary and the primary. Um, I have yet to see a market generation method that successfully produces these short term or short term particles without using or cutting into the primary and even you cannot do it. Especially if you want to do ADO. So I have a lot of hate relationships with marketers and I believe uh, sometimes the take market itself when you actually shouldn't do it. And there was a talk at the road and egg session on Monday where a professor talked about it and I think there's something in there. There are absolutely cases and I have example here where we want to do this market, but sometimes we should just do it all the time. Sometimes we should look into it. But that's a topic for another presentation. With smart focusing, we are all about space, space field, space run. So we love anything that has anything to do with space. We all know that a image point, a reflector from the subsurface doesn't come back at, uh, at the point. It comes back at the base field. However, the way we record the data and the way we process the data conventionally, we are assuming exactly this. So we, we process data and then we sort it into a unit, the CCD gather, CMD gather, whatever you want to call it, where we have traces to stand for a particular system. And then we use the fixed equation that was especially designed for this and has one unknown zero to the loss of the equation to a line with traces, frequent factor, and micro, and whatever else you want to do. By doing this, we are only utilizing this amount of data from the whole time period, from the part of the data unit that comes back up. In market focusing, we are now approximating traces between these green areas, and uh, we are taking these traces, and they are, these traces now do not have same for the field distance anymore, they have arbitrary for the field distance. Therefore, we cannot use the dissipation. And we have uh, designed, or well, they have been designed, a new equation. This is now a topic clearly. And I'm at that point not showing it to you. It's a very, it's a lot more important. Anybody who has interest in finding out a lot more in depth information, you can go to our website, we have papers there. So the topic here is uh, approximation, is now a function of the four systems. The zero distance, the velocity at the near subsurface, uh, one angle and two radius. And, and I was going to talk to you about what those parameters are. So, micro focusing is the multi dimensional approximation method, which means that we are claiming for those three parameters simultaneously because they are all interconnected. And so the first radius is the radius of the subsurface wave coming from a single image point. This radius is directly related to the RMS velocity. So one of the outputs of the body focusing is the velocity value at every frame in every central interval. So we get very detailed calculated velocity. Here is our gamma, our beta. The beta is is the angle of the peak of the reflector. And that's going to be especially important for how we separate particles from dynamics. 
So this way we speed correct our velocity. And then we have the second radius, which is the radius of the new bicycle so as exploding surface. Of course, in reality, nothing explodes down there. It's really something to make it or have the earthquake make an explosion. But for simplicity, we say we have an exploding surface, we have a radius. The size of this surface depends on the personnel count that goes into your calculation. So now we have many, many more places. And the amount of places, again, depends on personnel count. This takes a minute. So the statistic is going to be on the one side. You have not the uh, 40 traces, like you have 40 or 46 ports, you can have 10,000 traces. And we do it so as a three-sex domain and we increase the speed level. So very simply by the focus is a very powerful uh, rate of noise in radio. But these attributes, and I show them now, they are also meaningful for other applications. Before I go there, I quickly touch the uh, 3D microfocusing, which is very computer intense because now we have eight parameters. We can see we have now uh, the real wave speed coming up and we are trained for the different angles. This is done with the isotropic case where we assume that the wave speed is very big. Of course, if you have anisotropy, you have an elliptically wave so you have even more parameters. And anybody who is really interested in the mathematics here is our formula. So this uh, microfocusing attitude we can be used now for example for in migration, for depth migration, we can use them for um, uh, velocity anisotropy calculation. So if we have a white arc in data set, we are taking every arc every grade, every center, again, very computer intense, that's the right state of it. And you can you will have then uh, at least that you have uh, anisotropy, it's fair when you have none. So it's a, it's a very powerful tool. So here's the inversion angle system. The background is a stack section, and here's your arctic line, and the inversion angle is displayed in color. So this is, for example, plus 30 degrees angle, this is minus 30 degree angle, and anything that's left is in yellow. So that's your inversion angle. Here is the curvature or the exploding surface. Uh, this display is placed in positive and negative, so here you have the positive curvature, here you have the negative curvature, and then when you have the yellow, you have no curvature. And this is now the um, radius coming from the base generated by the point. And as I mentioned, it's directly related to the RLS velocity and here is your conversion formula. And so therefore, that looks like a very detailed velocity function. And I'm just going to show you what the conventional microfocusing does to your data. So here you have some, this is part of the beginning. You get the input, very noisy, hard to see structure. And after microfocusing, you get a much better figure to noise ratio. So now you can start to search the things you are This is also a new thing. Uh, low core data, therefore are noisy. Again, after the screen, you a lot of the noise, increase the signal, much easier to interpret. And here's the time size. It's 560 milliseconds, conventional microfocus. But let's go on to the core of the talk, which is the multiple generation. So multiple focusing multiple generation, we need to be able to separate the multiples in the mainly in the deep domain. The velocity domain is the, the normal way you separate the multiples, but the strange thing is we can separate them also in the deep domain. And uh, we are using multiple to predict a multiple model. And then we use an assessment like an SLME approach to separate the multiple model from the input data, and we have a much improved uh, multiple reduced section. So we, we uh, efficiently, efficiently estimating inversion angle, multifocusing velocity, and curvature of the surface. 
Then we are not in the diameter of the of the of this of the module group because it includes this module focusing attributes. And uh, the module focusing velocity then is C free. And so when you now I will make an example that I show you, we can now actually see a difference in the velocity between the primary and the particles. If the multiple has a different width than your primary, then the four you can see anything. So this is the physics together, and I hear the case, so to me it was a bit confusing at the beginning, so perhaps it's confusing to you too. But this is the model there, a CVD data, obviously, I said, and here is the time. And the first event is actually the multiple. And what was not clear is that the multiple is flat event that's coming from a set reflector, and the primary is a tipping event. But because they are so close together, they are hard to separate. So this is now the conventional velocity bundle. The top one is the multiple, the second one is the, the primary, and you can see the velocities are identical. However, when we look at the inversion table domain, we can see a difference. So this is zero, and that is very degree. So you see the difference between the multiple and the um, primary very clearly in the this domain. So now we are decorating our velocity. This is one of the things which is automatically done during the multi focusing uh, calculation. And look what happens. Here you have no separation in the velocity domain. Here you have a very clear separation. So now you can uh, uh, subtract or you can separate the velocity in the, as the market is in the velocity domain, which is something we are uh, used to do. So let's look at a uh, seismic example, which is more exciting for us. Uh, equation is. This target was below 3,000 milliseconds, and there was a sea plan uh, at around 3,250 milliseconds, and a very strong long path particle was occurring. So here's our section. And this one here is the particle <coughs> generator. Then you have the first segment multiple, which is a short path multiple, so it's very close to the primary. And this one here is the second, and the very strong one. There are more, more multiple in section, and they don't have a probate board, and when you are able to see the decision, but really what I like to discuss today are those who main parts of the event. So here we are separating in the velocity domain. So you can actually see this is the velocity center, and this is the CMT gather before multiple separation. Here is your, again, here is my multiple generator, and here is my first segment multiple, and here is my long bar multiple. So you can actually see there is a difference in the velocity um, over this area. This is now in the conventional velocity. But when you reduce it, you can actually beautifully see now it's gone. And the multiple goes wrong. The short part multiple, as I mentioned at the beginning, we could not do this either. Because if we would have been this one here, it definitely would have been some of the primary energy, and then it's not valid for ABO anymore. I have no uh, slides here, but the previous presenter pointed out the ABO validity of their methodology. Ours is going to ABO system. That's actually good system. Now we're looking at the inversion training. And we look at, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to take the way along, uh, this is the inversion training, for the child to be. So you have the inversion training. And before we do our market dimensional, so everything is done interconnected, search for these three parameters. We do not see much separation in the inversion training domain either. But after we do the, uh, Multiple generation. Now we can see, see here this is zero, which means all these events are very close to horizontal. But now you have events there, this has a different thing. So we were able now to separate in those domains. 
Now let's look at the, the data again. So again, here we are, multiple generator, just that length, long term multiple, now what? So this thin line here, you couldn't see this one. It's going from here to here. So there's more than one thing we can see. This was obviously we saw that the multiple says the phase now for radio phase now, so you see the structure below. Because why could we do this? The multiple has a bit in this direction, the primary has a bit in this direction. So when we modeled our multiple, we, we estimated the way they generate this tipping event and did not include ways that come as a specimen. When you look here, the short path multiple is generated, there's absolutely no question, but it's still somewhat existing. And the other thing that I see when I look at this section is a higher frequency contact. The multiple has a lower frequency, it cures the primary, so you go from really low frequency length here, you don't know what's going on behind, you see your structure, higher frequency. And this is, by the way, a post-sex migration. So in a summary, I would like to point out that the multiple are defined as reflectors which occur more than one from the same event. They can be grouped in long part or short part multiples, and there are various methodologies available that we have to use for long term, long time, like the radar last one has been around for a very long time, really, like 10 years, it's geologically not a long time, but for us it is. And it's already needed, it's been a talk before, but there are still limitations of this methodology. And we believe that by using the, the parameters of the whole base field, including the heat component, we found a very good way to separate uh, multiples from primary when the velocities, the conventional velocities, do not show much of the separation. So we uh, model and predict the multiples in the multi-focusing attribute domain, and then the uh, but everything is really, we, we identify them in the pre sex domain, everything is done in the pre sex domain, and then we calculate them and get a much better, much better, better multiple generated section. Thank you. Thank you. We have plenty of time for questions. If you have a question, please come to the microphone and introduce yourself. and you work together with the interpreter. And this is especially true for multi-focusing because we are estimating data, we are using, these were very accurate estimations, but we are using parameters for constraints. There are still more than one solution. It's not a non-unique solution. So it's more input I get from you, Frank, and better data are you Thank you. That was a very nice presentation. One thing that I really like about this whole thing, and I haven't heard anybody talk about it really in using Fresnel's principle, Fresnel's constraint to respect to how you drag the super gadgets and you can the code. And that, that helps control some of your power factors and things like that. So, I'll you that. Thank you very much. I wasn't asked the question as well. What's the limitations of your uh, 
that's a part of some called what's been covered this year in multiple, but you can either identify or can you identify the practice in multiple. Where does this break that? I think it depends on your site specific. So you saw in my sense that he has a very short of my security goes to the primary and we could only take it partially out. And that's because if you have higher resolution data, you could probably have taken more. On the question, we also have a methodology how we extract the questions from the seismic. And I gave a talk on this yesterday. And if you're worried about the question, you have to just one of the ways you could approach it, but we have not done it yet. So I, and one of the limitations of the methodology is it's extremely computer intense. So if you have like 504 data, I tell you, it's going to be lost. We have a very large disaster and it will still take a very long time to run. But we do these calculations every grade, every center, every offset, every argument. So that is, in my opinion, the largest uh, limitation. And of course, if you go into the area, so that they have absolutely no idea what the market is selling, what the underlying primary selling, and they have to take some people, which is depending the primary. So, but that is pretty much where the required and so you need to know approximately where the very market is going, what is the market is going. All right, if there are no more questions, let's thank Alex Speaker one more time.